Recently, I made a video looking at the Creality K1 in depth. And if you guys are looking for that video, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Overall, I had a very positive experience with that machine and it's still working very well for me. However, I've noticed online there's been a lot of users who have had issues with clogged or jammed extruders. And I'm not talking about hot ends, that's a completely different issue, but the extruder itself. After recently having to deal with one myself, I'm fairly confident I've identified what the issue is and I'd like to show you guys how to fix it as well as how to avoid it in the first place. I believe it comes down to how you're unloading your filament, so the first thing we'll look at is how to properly unload the filament to prevent these extruder jams in the first place. We'll begin by using the touchscreen to retract the filament, so you'll go into the control section, extrude, retract, and we'll hit the retract button. The machine will take over and preheat the nozzle, and it will then extrude a small amount of filament and then retract the remaining filament back up into the PTFE tube. At this point, you might be tempted to try and pull the rest of the filament through the PTFE tube, either by winding it up at the spool or even coming up to the print head here and trying to pull it out through the top. Uh, but before you do that, I would highly recommend, and this is critical, unlocking the extruder because this is where the problem originates from. So you'll notice I've removed the retaining clip and now I'm pulling the PTFE tube out and you'll notice that there's this stretched out portion of the filament here. That stretched out portion of filament would have remained below the point at which the gears are engaging with the filament. And had I not unlocked the extruder lever, that portion of filament would have gotten stuck down below that point of engagement as I pulled the filament out. And now those remnants of oddly shaped pieces of filament would remain in the extruder system. Then when you go to push or extrude your new filament through, it's very likely that those pieces of filament will get caught up in the gears. So the trick is to always unlock your extruder lever before carefully removing your filament. And I would always remove your filament like I showed you here, right above the extruder, so you can pull up on it nice and straight. Now if you do happen to jam up your extruder, I'll show you guys how to disassemble it here and unclog it. And so first you'll start by removing the PTFE retaining clip and then remove your PTFE tube. At this point, you can see I've already unloaded the filament. But we're gonna be removing the plastic cover over the extruder motor. You'll pry up with a flathead screwdriver under those two tabs and it'll pop off. Now you can see the two screws on the right hand side holding the extruder in place. We'll remove those two and then there's another one on the left hand side. Same thing, we'll remove that single screw. Unfortunately, we can't just pull up on the extruder motor just yet. We have to remove the front cover as well. So there's two screws, one on the left and one on the right hand side. While you're performing these next steps, make sure the machine powers off because we're going to be unplugging some electrical connections. Rotate the front cover away from the bottom and pull up. Don't just rip it right off because there's a small connector for the part cooling fan on the front board that we have to remove. On the right hand side, this will reveal the four pin connector for the extruder stepper motor. And if this is the first time you're doing this, the connector will likely be glued into place. So you'll have to slowly work on that connector to loosen it off and eventually it will come out. Just be careful not to break it because it is a very small connector. And now if you take a look from the back, you can see it becomes more obvious how you can lift the extruder straight up and wiggle the wire out of place. There's a small strain relief tab that you have to work the wire around to release it. There's also a small piece of PTFE tube that sits between the extruder and the hot end that may or may not come out. Mine came out, so I put it back in. Don't lose that piece. Bring your extruder module to a well-lit area because we're going to be tearing it down. And you can see in my case here, it doesn't matter if I lock or unlock the lever, these gears are totally jammed up. I can't turn them by hand. To open up the case to access the inside where the gears are, we're going to remove these two M3 screws right from the front. The motor will pull away from the rest of the case and I would recommend that you inspect around the motor and pinion gear. Mine had what looked like metal debris, so I cleaned that up. And at this point I still couldn't see where the filament jam was inside, but those gears were still locked up. So I completely removed the M3 screws that we just loosened off and now the top plastic cover will pull off. Keep the gear set upright so nothing falls out. But as soon as I took the cover off, I could see exactly what the problem was and there is a piece of filament stuck in one of the gears. 
And as I pointed out earlier, I suspect this was the problem caused by me pulling the filament out before unlocking the extruder. Without unlocking the extruder, those tiny bits of stretched out filament would get torn off below the gears that grip the filament. And then those pieces would find their way into the gear system. And since I had everything already apart, I thought it would be a good idea to do a thorough inspection and check all of the gear teeth and use a hobby knife to remove any remaining debris. When I was finished, we can install everything back in the reverse order of disassembly. So we'll put the cover back on and we'll take those two M3 screws and we'll thread them back through the front of the cover towards the rear and we'll sandwich our motor back in place making sure that the motor cable is facing the right direction. If you install the motor the wrong way, the cable will be facing upside down. Then we can tighten those M3 screws. Remember, these are small screws, so you don't have to go too crazy with the torque. Just snug them up tight enough. And now that your extruder is all cleaned out, you should be able to freely turn those gears by hand again. Now you can reassemble everything at this point, but since we have the front cover off, I'm also going to show you guys how to replace the nozzle because I'm going to be replacing my brass nozzle with a hardened steel nozzle from my website, embracemaking.com. So with the nozzle at room temperature, you'll pull off the silicone boot. Be sure not to damage any of the thermistor or heater band wires. Then you can set the nozzle temperature to 240 degrees Celsius. And once it's up to temperature, you can take your 12 millimeter wrench and a nozzle wrench and carefully break the nozzle loose. And if you've never done this before, you want to try and hold the 12 millimeter wrench stationary while only turning the nozzle wrench. Try and avoid twisting the heater block around. Keep in mind the nozzle is going to be hot, so don't touch it with your fingers and your wrenches may also get hot the longer they stay in contact with that nozzle. Up at the top of your print head, you can unlock the extruder and use the included tool with the K1 to push any remaining filament through. And now we can grab our hardened steel nozzle. And again, this one is from my web store, embracemaking.com. And we're gonna to begin to thread that in to the hot end. I applied some high temperature copper based anti-seize to those threads and then I started threading the nozzle in by hand. Since the heater is still on, the nozzle will get hot very quickly so you'll want to switch back to your tools to do the final tightening. Always keep in mind with your tools, these are relatively small parts and you do not want to over tighten your nozzle. Over tightening can lead to things breaking. Now I've set the nozzle temperature back to zero and it's cooling down but you can turn the side fan on and this is going to accelerate the cooling of your nozzle. Now you don't have to turn that fan on, but it does save a little bit of time so that we can bring the nozzle back down to room temperature so we can use our fingers again to reinstall the silicone boot. The new hardened nozzles may not stick out of the silicone boot as far as the original brass ones do, so this is completely normal and it'll look something like this. Then you'll want to turn the machine power off and we're gonna plug our part cooling fan back in and reinstall our front cover. The holes at the top of the cover will hook onto the two pegs on the print head, and then you can swing it back down and install the two screws on the side of the front cover to secure it in place. The front cover is the only major part you have to remove to replace the nozzle, but I also had the extruder out from earlier when I was removing the filament jam. So in my case, I'm also going to have to reconnect my extruder stepper motor and reinstall the extruder module in the reverse order that I disassembled it. With everything back in place, we can feed filament back into the machine and you can see I'm using my remote spool stand. I'll link to a video about that in the top right hand corner of the screen. And that came about because I'm just not crazy about the original spool location at the back of the K1. Then we can manually feed the filament back into the extruder, push the PTFE tube in place and lock the extruder lever and finally reinstall the push fitting retaining clip. From the touchscreen, we can go back into the controls menu, head up to extrude retract, and then press the extrude button. The nozzle will preheat and then the K1 will extrude an excessive amount of plastic in my opinion, but the nozzle will be thoroughly primed. And that's it, I was back to printing right away and I didn't have to change any Z offset or even run the full auto bed leveling sequence. My first layers were coming out perfect on my textured PEI flex plate, and clearly my extruder was no longer jammed up. In the near future, I'm gonna be running some carbon fiber filaments, which are much more abrasive, and that was the whole point of moving on to a hardened steel nozzle. 
I can't wait to see how those prints will turn out on the K1, and I hope you guys are interested too. And if you are, please consider subscribing to my channel because there will be more K1 content to come. And if this video helped you guys out, please consider supporting my work by visiting my website embracemaking.com where you'll find a lot of awesome maker products as well as content like resources, including a Prusa Slicer profile for the K1. I'll put a link to that in the video description down below. Thanks for watching.